All right, so over the past few days, I've been bored as hell, and I was like, you know what? There is no better time for me to go back to some of the older Call of Duty games and search for matches, see if the community is still active. So that's exactly what I did on my Xbox. We're going to be starting off at Call of Duty 4 and working our way to Call of Duty Vanguard. And I basically just wanted to see if I could get into matches relatively quickly. So that's exactly what I did. And if you're a huge fan of Call of Duty 1, 2, or 3, you can click off this video. You can hate my guts because I did not go back and search for those games. I just never played them, never owned them, so I didn't even think to do that. But yeah, 360, this kid shooting right in the dick, that is gonna hurt for a few days. I should mention that not all this gameplay is mine because my stupid ass capture card was not recording, but just take it from me, I promise, I promise you, I did go back and search myself. So I do have information on each of these games in the series, and I do have information if they are still active. So there's gonna be timestamps down below for each of the Call of Duty games if you just want to see a specific one, see if it's still active, see if there's still players online. But yeah, this is Call of Duty Cold War and Call of Duty Vanguard. I thought I would start it, start it off with those two games just because they are the two most recent games and it is kind of a given that they're going to be active. So get those two out of the way and now we're going to be going to Call of Duty 4, one of the most iconic games in the entire franchise. This is the game that kind of blew up the series uh, 12 years ago. And as you can see, this it still has 3,000 players online. Not all of them are in the multiplayer. I think some are in like private matches and campaign, but still a pretty good number. That number was recorded probably, all of these numbers were recorded in the last month. So if I say it's active, it's active, motherfucker. And uh, that guy sitting in the corner, I don't know what the hell he's doing, but he had to get embarrassed because we just don't accept camping in any Call of Duty game. But yeah, this game was extremely simplistic, but it just worked. Uh, there was just not a lot of kill streaks, not a lot of weapons, just really simple maps, but it just worked. Like I said, sometimes simple is better, and that's exactly what Call of Duty 4 was. Very, very bare bones, but it just, I just absolutely loved it. And this is the COD 4 on 360, I should mention. This is not the remaster that came out in 2017, but yeah and you're gonna find matches for all these older call of duty games in the bear in the the big three modes which are free for all tdm and search and destroy so you can try looking in other game modes but those are like the three that are are going to be most popular for especially for the older call of duty games even the current call of duty games those are probably the three most popular modes but yeah, let's move on to Call of Duty World at War. This is a game that you either love or you either hate in the series. And as you're seeing on the screen, 600 players online, so not a lot of players. And some days, as I have a voice crack, I'm still going through puberty. Um, some days it's even less. So, you know, the other day I think I went online and there was like 400 people online. Some days it's up to 1,000 or even a little bit higher. But this was one of the games that was hacked even years ago. Like, even two three years after its release there was a lot of hacked lobbies there was god mode you were 400 feet under the map or 400 feet above the map this this game is kind of notorious for hacks especially at the time now some of the older call of duty games not just world at war have been hacked but this was like the first one that everybody knew call of duty world at war was hacked but when it wasn't being hacked this game was fantastic this is one of the few world war games that i actually enjoyed uh treyarch's first game no this was treyarch's second game in the series but we don't really count Call of Duty 3. This was the game that, that kind of made Treyarch. And zombies were introduced in that game. But we're moving on to Marvel for 2. And Marvel for 2 is my personal favorite game in the entire series. I know I'm not alone there. I mean, the maps in this game can literally cause orgasms within 5 seconds of thinking about them. You had 16 maps at launch. And I would honestly say, like, every single map in this game, there was like, no map that I was kind of... Like, ah, oh, shit, we gotta play this map. Other than maybe Wasteland, but if you're a sniper, Wasteland was also fun. Uh, Marvel for 2 also has, like, a weird glitch where it shows zero players online, but you can still find matches uh, depending on the day or what time of the day you search for. But, yeah, there's this game did have its problems, as I'm sure you guys all know. One-man army and noob tubing were a huge problem at the time. But I think it got worse over the years, to be honest, because when this game launched, I don't remember tons of noob tubes. Again, I was only 14 years old. I was in lobbies screaming at 40 year olds and stuff like that. Some The lobbies in this game were iconic as shit. I'm sure you guys have seen all the memes and stuff about the lobbies. It was trash. Talk. I was one of the kids in there screaming at 40 year old adults and stuff. It was pretty bad. But um, yeah, Marvel for 2, my personal favorite entire series. Just so many good memories on this game. The kill streaks, as you guys are seeing that Harrier come up, there was the kill streaks in this game, the AC-130, the Harrier, the Predator missile, just 
Let me shut up and talk about Black Ops. Call of Duty Black Ops, probably the most underrated game in the franchise. Still a pretty good amount of people online with this game, um, which is a good sign. I mean, this game is kind of forgotten about, I feel like, in the series, but it had so many intriguing ideas, like so many different and unique ideas with this game. There was the wager matches that you're going to see some gameplay in a minute. Uh, it introduced like gun game and one in the chamber, and you could basically bet your COD points and try to like... You were basically gambling your, your COD points and you were trying to get more COD points and then with the COD points you can go and unlock weapon skins and, and different emblems and stuff like that. So just and, and then the maps. I feel like this game had the second best maps in Call of Duty history probably after Marvel for 2 that we just talked about. So, it, you know, Nuketown was the... This was the first game with Nuketown and it's been put into every single Call of Duty game almost since then. But yeah, this was the first game with Nuketown. It also had a great zombies mode, a fantastic campaign, even though we're not really talking about those uh, those two modes. I don't even know if the zombies is still active. I unfortunately didn't go back and check if the zombies were active on any of these games. I just did the multiplayer. But yeah, still, still a lot of people in TDM and uh, some people in Free For All and Search and Destroy. But it's slowly dying. There's not a lot of people. I think there's like 2,000 people or less most days on this game on the Xbox. But really, really good Call of Duty game. Cannot say enough good things about this game. And next up, we've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, also known as Modern Warfare 2.5. At least that was the joke at the time because it was so similar to Modern Warfare 2, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because Modern Warfare 2 is greatness. So... Yeah, this game was pretty solid. As you're seeing on the screen, a thousand players online, most of which are in the Team Deathmatch mode. That's your best bet with the older Call of Duty games. Just search for Team Deathmatch and you should be able to find a match in most of these games. And yeah, this game introduced some new modes like Infection, which was a lot of fun. Basically, one person started off as uh, infected and when you kill the other players in the lobby, they become infected. And it's just a swarm of infected players trying to kill each other. It's just a lot of fun. you got to search it up. Uh, I don't know if any of the other Call of Duty games had that mode. I think Ghost also had it. But one of the best Call of Duty modes ever. And uh, I think it needs to be in the newer games. Maybe it is in the newer games and I just haven't seen it. But loved Infection. I Overall, I loved this game. It was just more of the same. You know, this was the third installment into the, the Modern Warfare trilogy. Uh, continuation of the second one and the first one. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, great maps, great guns. I love the modern setting for Call of Duty games. I feel like it's the best setting. Next up, we've got Call of Duty Black Ops 2, one of the most beloved Call of Duty games in the entire franchise. This was the first futuristic game, and 1,500 players online. I remember when I signed on about a week ago, this was. I saw 1,500 players online, and I was kind of it was kind of disheartening to see, to be honest. I thought it would be a higher number, because like I said, this is one of the fan favorites of the entire franchise probably in my top five ever and I remember when this game was announced I was kind of skeptical about it because I didn't know how they were going to incorporate like the futuristic aspect but they did a very good job very good job Treyarch always does a good job I feel like they do some of the best maps their their games always have a lot of color to them and, and just look really good they play really good so yeah kind of crazy to think that this game takes place in 2025 and it was supposed to be like a futuristic setting at the time and now we are in 2022 motherfuckers so we are almost there we are almost at 2025 and this game was supposed to be like way in the future right when it was released so yeah just a little bit mind-blowing to think about but this was a great game moving on we got call of duty ghost which is a perfect title for this game because it is kind of a ghost in the Call of Duty franchise. Not a lot of people talk about it, not very memorable, but it was a pretty good game. 100 players online, which I was completely shocked because I remember going on to this game about two years ago and I think there was over 3,000 players online, so I was very shocked to see 100 players. Maybe I just hit it on a bad day, who knows, but yeah, Ghost was was kind of forgotten, like I said, and it just wasn't very memorable. I mean, it had some good maps. It was uh, okay. I feel like this is a weird time in Call of Duty where Infinity War didn't really know what they wanted to do. So instead of making another Modern Warfare game, they just decided to make Ghosts. And a side note, the campaign in this game was fantastic. Like probably top three campaigns ever in Call of Duty. Um, but as far as the overall game, it had an extremely fast time to kill in this game. I mean, you kill, look at this shit. Look how fast you kill. It is ridiculous. But, yeah, I still think this game was pretty good. And 100 players online, this game might die in the next year or maybe even sooner. So, I'm hoping not, but honestly, at this point, you never know. 
Then we got Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. This was the first of three jetpack games. This game was absolute insanity. I mean, look at the screen. There's people flying above your head, under your head, in your mouth. It was just craziness. 24-7, you had to be cracked out of your mind to play this game. Uh, very, very different from the other Call of Duty games, as I'm sure you can tell from the gameplay. And surprisingly, there's still a decent amount of people on the game. I'm not exactly sure of the numbers, simply because Call of Duty went away from showing the numbers in Advanced Warfare. Like, you know at the beginning of the game, in the multiplayer menu, how you could check and see how many players are online. I think Advanced Warfare was the first game, if I'm not mistaken, to take that away. So, I don't know how many players are exactly on this game, but I was able to get in matches fairly quickly, at least in the Team Death matches. So, yeah. This was, a, like I said, very different game from all the other Call of Duty games, but I still enjoyed it for what it was. Not my favorite jetpack game, we're going to get to that in a second, but overall, I thought this game was very unique and not bad. Then we got Call of Duty Black Ops 3. This was my personal favorite of the three jetpack games. This was Treyarch's touch on the whole, you know, futuristic jetpack era of Call of Duty, and I feel like it was a really good game. Overall, I mean, with Treyarch, you know that you're going to get good maps, very colorful, very vibrant. I mean, this is just beautiful, sexy as hell to look at, if I do say so myself. And, yeah, I just thought this game was perfect. You know, it just had a good balance. I love the specialist abilities. Advanced Warfare didn't let you... You know, it had advanced movement, but it didn't have the whole wall running, which this was the game that introduced wall running, and I, I kind of like that, to be honest. I uh, felt like it was a, another skill gap, you know, compared to other players. You could tell who was a bot and who was good in this game because the the advanced movement definitely took some skill to, to get good at. But I feel like the general consensus about this game is it's like the fan favorite of the three jetpack games. I'm not saying everybody's going to feel that way. You might like Infinite Warfare or Advanced Warfare better, but I feel like this is the fan favorite of the three jetpack games. It's my personal favorite. And I was able to get into matches really quickly with this game, so I think there's still a pretty active community on this game. And last but not least, to round out the three jetpack games, we got Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. This game, I'm going to be completely honest with you, I did not put that much time into this game, simply because it released, if you guys remember, this game released with Modern Warfare Remastered. So the whole year that this game was out, I was pretty much just playing Modern Warfare Remastered. But... I think this game gets a bad reputation simply because it is the third and last jetpack game. I feel like at this point everybody just wanted to go back to what Call of Duty used to be. Boots on the ground, classic Call of Duty. So I feel like people just kind of hated on this game unnecessarily. Uh, I do think it is the weaker of the, the three jetpack games but yeah I was still able to find matches on this game so it seems like there is still uh, a community that does, you know, part of the community does enjoy this game which again if uh, these games are holding up and there's still players playing, then that is great news. Moving on to World War II. So after three years of futuristic gameplay, we finally got to go back to classic Call of Duty. World War II setting, which, ah, I mean, sometimes I like World War II games, sometimes I don't. Uh, I'm more of like just a modern fan when it comes to first-person shooters, but this game was, I would say it was very mediocre. Not the best Call of Duty, not the worst, just somewhere in the middle. Um, this was a sledgehammer game, and yeah, the, my main issue with this game was that it actually launched with only 8 maps, which, I mean, come on, you cannot launch a Call of Duty game with only 8 maps. It got very repetitive, very boring, very quickly. That was my main harp with this game, but overall, not a bad Call of Duty. There is still, this game actually took me a while to get into matches, so I don't know if I hit it on a bad day. Maybe there was just, I think I was playing at like 10 or 11 p.m., but... It actually did take me a little bit to get into matches, but there is still some people on. I don't know the exact number again, but yeah, there is still some people playing this game. And we're going back to the future with Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Treyarch absolutely loves the futuristic style of games, and I can't blame them. I like them myself. My biggest issue with this game was the self-healing, like the stim healing. I wasn't a huge fan of that, and I hope we never see it again in Call of Duty, but... Yeah, Black Ops 4 was probably the weakest game of the, the four Black Ops games. That's, that's just my opinion. Maybe you like it the best, but uh, I think Black Ops 1, 2, and 3 were a little bit better. And not to say this game's bad, I still had a lot of fun on this game. And, you know, this is one of the more recent Call of Duty games. I think this game came out four years ago now at this point. So with the more recent Call of Duty games, you can bet that you're going to still have no problem getting into games. A lot of players online. 
And yeah, that's just, that's a given with the newer Call of Duty games. No issues whatsoever getting into matches, which is a, a really good sign. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, I'm gonna say it right off the bat, I am not a big fan of this game and having to go back the other day for this video to record some gameplay, I still hold the same feelings. I mean, I just think the time to kill is absolutely ridiculous. Sometimes you don't even have to shoot your gun. You can just look at somebody and they drop dead. It's like your Lord Voldemort or something. They just panic and die. I don't get it. But yeah, I know Call of Duty is kind of notorious for having a fast time to kill, but this game just takes it to another level. It, the time to kill, I was not a big... Look at that. Just I don't even think I shot my gun there. I don't even think I hit him and he just died. <laughs> so yeah, the one thing I did like about this game though was the engine. Very fluid, very smooth gameplay. I like the, the whole slide mechanic. I like the... They also use this same engine for Vanguard, if I'm not mistaken, and Warzone, of course. So that's the one thing good that's the one good thing about this game, I guess you could say. The engine is solid and I'm glad they are continuing to use it. But yeah, that brings us back to Call of Duty Vanguard. And like I said, the the more recent Call of Duty games like Modern Warfare and Cold War and Vanguard, you're gonna have no trouble getting into games because there's just a lot of players on the more recent Call of Duty games. But yeah, Activision, of course, got bought out by Microsoft earlier this year. So I think all of these games are going to get a boost in the next year or so. Like, once the deal goes through, I think you're going to see all of the Call of Duty games on Game Pass. And once you see all the games on Game Pass, like all the older Call of Duty games, their communities are going to grow. So some of the older games that you're, if you're worried about them dying off, I bet you next year when the deal goes through and all the Call of Duty games are on game pass I, I bet you the you know there's gonna be a lot higher player counts on those games so I would love to know down in the comment section what you guys what's your favorite Call of Duty game what game do you want to see remaster some of these Call of Duty games need to be remastered they just are begging for a remaster you know gloss them up update the graphic graphics make them look sexy as hell and yeah I should also mention that Call of Duty Modern Warfare the remaster from 2017 still has players on it and Blackout I searched for a while and I honestly it took me like five minutes to get into a game but it was like 40 people in the lobby so it wasn't a good wasn't a good time so I think Blackout is kind of dead to be honest if you were wondering but yeah that's pretty much it I will kiss you guys later peace